today we will be cleaning the mass airflow sensor. There are two kinds of airflow sensors on the Mazda 66. There is a MAF mass airflow sensor or a VAF which is a volumetric airflow sensor found on the V6. The VAF is basically a flap and depending on how much intake air is coming in will push that flap up and that measures the volume of air coming in. This one is a, let's just call it a hot wire type. There is a tiny little wire, an electrically charged wire. It's held at a constant temperature. The wire is at a constant temperature. Depending on the airflow coming through to the intake, we'll cool that wire down and how much it cools that wire down basically tells the car how much air is coming in. That's how those two different sensors on the 626 work. That one for the i4 automatic transmission is a mass airflow sensor. Torx head screws, so you take that off. I have a nice little Torx set. It's got the hole in the middle, which I've already described in a previous video. I'm not quite sure if you can see how fine of a wire those sensors are. They are extremely fine. Here's a horsehair brush, just for comparison. It's about the size of a horsehair. So you have to be extremely careful when you're cleaning. But it sits in like this and the connector goes off to that side, right? I didn't actually clean any of it and that's just the way that it, it happens with, with the airflow. It doesn't actually get the back side of those wires or those rods dirty at all. And this is an original part. So over 15, 16 years, whatever, the back side of those rods and the wires don't get dirty. But the front of these wires are extremely dirty. You can kind of see little bit off to the right side there it's really dirty let's just say right where that rod is you can kind of see where I scraped my fingernail and it's silver on the rod and the rest of it is completely black so we're gonna have to be extremely delicate when we clean this extremely delicate you break those wires and that's it this is a very expensive part so be very 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 delicate with this treat that like a baby You don't want to press on it, you want to let's just say just keep brushing. Now normally I would say don't touch the wire at all. Just use your can of throttle body or MAF cleaner on this, but this is so gunked up that MAF and throttle body cleaner won't do the job. MAF and throttle body cleaner is less harsh than carb cleaner. Carb cleaner is also not sensor safe. So that's another reason why you don't want to use this. But I, I wanted to try the the harsh solvent compared to throttle body or math cleaner. And it still didn't do anything. You want to dry this out. So let this sit out, dry out. Once the carbon buildup on this has dried out a little bit, it should be a little bit easier to start sweeping that off. If there's only a little bit of carbon buildup on there, you can probably get away with using just throttle body or MAF cleaner or carb cleaner. I don't recommend carb cleaner because it's not sensor safe, so just use throttle body or MAF cleaner if that doesn't do it. Um, you can try carb cleaner, but chances are if the throttle body or the MAF cleaner doesn't do it, neither will the carb cleaner. So get a little brush like this. I got this one from AutoZone. This is actually pretty coarse bristle. You might want to try and find something has, that has a softer bristle. I don't recommend using nylon because nylon uh, is very hard. This is what looks to be like horsehair. Trying to find something that's a little softer. It'll take you more time, but the chances of disconnecting that wire, and it's barely on there. Let's go really light. Feather touches, you know, might take you five, ten minutes. That's fine. Just choose a day when you have some time, Saturday or Sunday, something like that. I don't know how well you can see that, but the front of the sensor is now clean. Now getting through the front sensor to the back sensor is a little tricky. That's why I'm going like this, basically trying to get to both of them at once. And I'll switch up a little bit and try and go inside like that. That's basically how you do that. Not too bad, huh? Okay, I'm going to try and move this metal wire until it's straight. This is very delicate work. And then you can kind of
line of C. It's not straight here. So we'll push that up the best we can. Looks fairly straight to me. Okay. So, there you go. Hopefully that will work a little bit better. Oh, and here's the part number, just in case you want to get that. And all there is to reinstallation, you can see right here there's a, a black gasket surrounding so that, let's just say no water seeps in going down in that hole, so that's nice. And to reinstall, just insert that right back down in there. Very careful. screws to line up. And now you don't want to over tighten because there is a possibility of cracking this aluminum base or the plastic. You don't want to do that. So just get it down there until it's nice and snug. And you can't see any holes around sides there. Everything looks like it's mounted up. If you want to, you can put some type of gasket adhesive around here just to prevent a little bit of unmetered air because anything that rolls through here will be unmetered air as well as anything anything after the MAF or the VAF becomes unmetered air anything from here back if there's an air leak from here back that's unmetered air if you have an air leak up here doesn't matter at all period doesn't matter only air leaks from here back matter it's probably not a bad idea after you clean that to go ahead and reset your ECU so in order to reset your ECU, you take off the negative terminal from your battery and you put a load on it, electrical load. So let's just say press your brake pedal for about 30 seconds. That will drain all of the residual power from the system. Pretty much same thing as like recycling your modem, which today we're all pretty much familiar with. Uh, you just want to drain all the power out of the system. That resets the ECU. Also wipes out Keep Alive Memory, I believe. So if you have any codes that you want to pull, you want to pull those before you reset the ECU. And take it for a test drive. And that's all there is to cleaning your math. Cool.